it's time to set up the vivarium for the dart frogs. Shout out to Josh's frogs, shout out to Reptile Prime, and shout out to Miss King. It's about to get real and real fast. If you set up an aquarium before, you should have no problem setting up a vivarium. It requires a cycling period, and it requires patience to get the right setup for the right animal. Follow me along as we set up this brand new vivarium for dart frogs. Now before we get started, we're gonna go step by step of adding each layer of this vivarium. Now, keep in mind, you should have all of the necessary supplies. You should have some access bottled water, some gloves to work with so that you don't get any uh, things stuck in your fingers, and you don't contaminate, because some of us use lotions or sanitizers, things of that nature. And while it may be okay for us, for a smaller ecosystem, it's not very good. A spray bottle to help with the dust from some of the materials. A tub of some sort to help you rinse the materials. Of course, an enclosure. And more importantly, all of the things. One of the first steps is installing your background. This background is from Reptile Prime, Brian Barczyk, BHB Reptiles, and the brand new Reptarium was kind enough to allow us to use this very exclusive background. And then we acquired some awesome, awesome mushrooms from Universal Rocks that we attached ourselves to make look a little bit more realistic. And then you just simply get it installed properly, and then you can start setting up the layers of your vivarium. Before we get started, I have two bags of false bottom. If you need to know how much false bottom you need, if you decide not to purchase a kit from Josh's Frogs, you can simply go to their website and go right to the substrate calculator to find out exactly how much you need for your vivarium. All right, got the gloves on. I'm gonna grab a colander because I don't wanna put all of the dust inside of here. So I'm going to simply just put the false bottom in here dump some water over it, get rid of all the dust. Some bags may be dustier than others, but that happens. So let's go ahead and wash the false bottom. Now I'm not using both bags because I have a background and the background takes up quite a bit of room. So I don't wanna overcrowd and allow this substrate to be way up here. I kinda of want it to sit right about there, so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then go on to the next step. So to keep the dust down when we're moving everything, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of squirt squirt right over it, nothing crazy, just to keep a little bit of moisture so that it holds down any of those fine particles. Keep in mind, we wanna get this as flat as possible, all right? So we just wanna go over it. It is a little abrasive, so keep your gloves on. Um, Unless you don't care, that's up to you, but this is a public service announcement brought to you in part by Health and Safety. So one of the things people will ask is, but why do we have to make sure that it's flat? Well, because you'll be able to see the water level and you'll know where exactly there is water and where there isn't. Because if the water does rise too high, it can harm the dart frogs. So you really wanna keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is patient, safety, and you can't get crazy with like aquascaping, uh, but you can get dang near close. I mean, look at that background. Uh, that's gonna be a little tough because, well, we've gotta put in a substrate barrier and that's next. Okay, scissors, substrate barrier, and make sure that uh, no substrate touches the uh, false bottom. Let's do it. Now you may have some overlapping material, but that is A-OK. -okay. And what you wanna make sure, made you look. What we wanna make sure that you do is just overlap it, don't trim it off. 
Uh, the only reason we made cuts is because we had to go around this very, very, very dimensional background from Reptile Prime. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it. Let's go on to the next step. So now the ABG is next. Let's mix it up so that we can make sure that it's ready to rock because it will come in layers and we'll show you that here. This material is a little bit abrasive as well. It's got some, some sticks and things like that. Uh, you know, Atlanta Botanical Garden worked very hard to, to get this stuff so that it's, I mean, this is the planting. This is, this is the elite mix. So just keep that in mind when you're mixing it up that you got some gloves on. Unless you really don't care, then that's up to you. Once you get it all mixed up, we're then gonna put it right in this bad boy, but we have to be careful because we don't want it to touch the false bottom. So what I did to prevent most of the catastrophe of happening, of having the ABG go into the false bottom, is I started with the corners, kind of lifted them up. I, I did get a little bit in there. I'm not freaking out, um, but as you can see, it is prevented um, from going down there. There was a little bit that trickled down here, but um, over time, I think there's still gonna be some that gets down there. You're just trying to prevent a massive amount from getting in there but I can already see that there's moisture being built up and humidity is going to start, which is exactly what the key is to this with growing beautiful plants and having a beautiful vivarium. Now it's time for the sphagnum moss. We've got to soak it. It's gonna take a little bit. Let's do it. And so what I mean by patience is we're gonna let the sphagnum moss, yes, sit for two hours. We want it to get as wet as possible because we don't want it to dry out in the vivarium. Now keep in mind, all of this stuff does take time, so have everything prepped. Maybe prep the moss prior to starting, so this way you can, bam, get it right in. You don't want it to be too wet, but you want it to be moist enough so that it holds humidity. This is all going to be key. This is all designed to create this vivarium into an amazing ecosystem, so that whatever you're putting in there thrives and thrives for as long as possible. All right, let's wait two hours. Two hours later. Now we're gonna add the sphagnum moss. And what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna, I don't know, jam it into the corners. Um, this is just a technique that you can find on the internet, but you're jamming it in the corners and you're not putting as much in the center. Then we're gonna plant this bad boy. We're gonna put in our decor and then we're gonna get to the Bioactive creatures, 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 creatures. So the idea is you want the sphagnum moss to sit. It doesn't have to be two hours. It could be five hours. It could be 10 hours. Uh, but when you take it out, it, you don't want it to be super saturated, but you want it to be wet. We've done a pretty good job. We've accented a little bit with the sphagnum moss, making it look a little bit more natural in this naturalistic vivarium, but it's already taking shape. I'm super pumped. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get the leaf litter ready. Then we're gonna get our decorations, and then we are going to plant this thing. And if you've got bromelades, bromelades, ah, whatever it's called, those just need a lot of air and a little bit of water. So we're gonna put those inside the background and potentially the logs, all right? So let's clean off the plants really well and then get them planted.
All right, one thing I didn't do the way some other people do it is I didn't put the leaves yet. I wanted the leaves to be the final, the denouement, the ending, the, the crazy, epic, just dramatic look. So I've got some, some vines hanging. Uh, I've got the sphagnum moss doing their thing. Uh, I'm letting that plant do its curl thing. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. Uh, I've got the plants all nice. Everything is super moist. Just remember to clean off the plants properly. Um, you don't want any of the leaves below the layer, so I'll do one more kind of run through, and then we'll add the bugs after I add the leaves, the magnolia and live oak leaves. I'll probably add the live oak leaves first. Now, I didn't go over the names of these plants because if you buy the kit from Josh's Frogs, it's all just gonna come and you can add more plants. But I think right now, this is a good setup. This is enough plants to get me where I need to be. I can always trim and add things later, but right now, it's pretty lush. Uh, and it's only gonna get better, it's gonna grow. I don't know if I like the bromelad there or whatever that thing's called. Um, this is okay here. Um, I want it to get a little more air. I've got one in the back that'll look nice. Um, maybe I'll take that one from up there and put it in there and we'll see how it looks. And then we'll add the leaf litters. Okay, now I'm gonna top off the rest with the leftover sphagnum moss. Um, have a little bit of it left, the spa moss. And um, man, I'm, I'm so freaking pumped. Um, this thing turned out way better than I anticipated. And once I get the lights on and everything, you'll see how epic. Now the final step is adding the isopods and any of your small uh, fauna that you're gonna put in there that's gonna break down the dart frog poop. Uh, it'll take all the waste, it'll break it down even further, and then the dart frogs will have a tasty treat every once in a while, um, and you'll continually add these by building cultures of your own. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into play here. Um, a lot of different levels, and so we'll go over them real quick. So we've got our false bottom, we have our barrier, then we have our ABG material, and then we have our spag moss, we've got our leaf litter, We've got our plants, uh, we've got our decorations, and then we've got our lighting, a background, and we've got our hydrometer and thermometer combo. And this little guy seems to absolutely love looking at it already. It's only been set up for a few minutes uh, fully, and so now it's a waiting game. If you've ever set up a fish tank, yeah, we now have to set this bad boy up. So, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, tell him. Tell them, you've got to wait 48 weeks. <laughs> and so once we get that, uh, the plants have rooted in properly and that everything has developed its own cultures they're reproducing because the dart frogs will eat that stuff, then you're ready to add the animals. You want to keep the temperature around 72 to 80 degrees, 85 degrees, and your humidity could be 80% all the way to 100%, uh, as long as you stay within that range. Because remember, in the tropical environment, it fluctuates as well. And if it's fluctuating, there's no reason to keep a consistent humidity and consistent temperature in here, as long as it's not falling out of those ranges. Thank you so much for liking, watching, sharing, tweeting, doing all the things you do. I hope you enjoyed this setup of an amazing vivarium. Shout out to Josh's Frogs for the great, great kits that they sell to make it much easier for us to do this. Everything's been added, all of the microfauna, and now it's a waiting game. Beautiful. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it.